Hello everyone, this video is about enzyme specificity. So what is the meaning of enzyme specificity? Enzyme specificity can be defined as the ability of the enzyme to discriminate between a substrate and a competing molecule. So this can be explained with a simple example. When we want to buy a mobile, we check for the specifications like what is the brand, battery capacity, security features, RAM and memory. So like this we'll check for the features. So here you are very specific to some features. If that mobile has all those features you want to buy, then you'll buy that mobile. So here the point is you are very specific to some features of the mobile. If it has those features, you'll buy it. In the same way, enzymes are also specific for their substrates or reactions. So enzyme is specific to groups that are present on the substrate. Because of these groups, substrate is able to bind with the amino acid residues at the active site of the enzyme. For example, there is one enzyme and this enzyme has glutamic acid at the active site. Now, three different substrates are added to this enzyme. 10 molecules each, that is 10 molecules of substrate 1 with hydroxyl group, 10 molecules of substrate 2 without hydroxyl group and 10 molecules of substrate 3 with two hydroxyl groups are added to the enzyme. And this mixture is kept aside for some time. After some time, when you observe, 10 molecules of substrate 1 disappeared. This is because the enzyme is specific to substrate which has only one hydroxyl group which forms hydrogen bond with the glutamic acid at the active site. So substrate 1 only can bind with the enzyme so that's why it disappeared. Whereas enzyme is not specific for substrate 2 without hydroxyl group and also substrate 3 which has an extra hydroxyl group. So that's why these are still present in the mixture. Specificity is one of the important properties of the enzymes like catalysis. So there should be some factor that is responsible for this property and that factor is binding energy. That means enzymes are able to show specificity because of this binding energy. Now coming to the classification of enzyme specificity, this is mainly classified into three types, substrate, reaction and stereospecificity. Substrate specificity is further classified into absolute, relative and broad substrate specificity. So among these three, the second type that is relative substrate specificity is further classified into group and bond specificity. I will see each type of specificity in detail. Now starting with substrate specificity, here we will discuss about the three different types and the subtypes of relative substrate specificity. So starting with absolute substrate specificity, so here these enzymes act only on one substrate, that's why it is called as the absolute substrate specificity. For example, for glucokinase, glucose is the only substrate. In the same way, for lactase, lactose is the only substrate and for urease, urea is the only substrate. Means glucokinase acts only on glucose, it cannot act on lactose or it cannot act on any other substrate. In the same way, the substrate for lactase is lactose. It cannot act on urea, it cannot act on glucose or any other substrate. Coming to second type of substrate specificity that is relative substrate specificity. In this case, enzyme acts on more than one substrate. It is of two types, group specificity and bond specificity. So group specificity is when an enzyme acts on more than one substrate containing a specific group. For example, Trypsin can hydrolyze the peptide bonds formed by carbonyl groups of arginine or lysine in any protein. Same way, chymotrypsin can hydrolyze the peptide bonds formed by aromatic amino acids in any protein. So that means 
these enzymes they can act on different substrates which contain the groups formed by these amino acids coming to second type of relative substrate specificity that is bond specificity enzymes which act on more than one substrate containing a particular type of bond for example glycosidases act on glycosidic bond this can be understood with a simple example that is salivary alpha amylase this particular enzyme acts on alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds so any substrate which contains this alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds on those substrate this enzyme can act but if the substrate is having beta 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds then the salivary alpha amylase cannot act on those bonds so that indicates the bond specificity in the same way proteolytic enzyme they act only on the peptide bonds they cannot act on the glycosidic bonds and lipases they act only on the ester bonds they cannot act on peptide bonds or glycosidic bonds so here the enzymes are specific to type of bond whether the substrate may be different if it contains a particular bond then these enzymes will act on those bonds and break the bonds coming to the third type of substrate specificity in this case an enzyme acts on more than one structurally related substrates for example hexokinase can act on hexoses like glucose fructose mannose so all these three sugars they contain six carbons so these six carbon sugars can be acted upon by the hexokinase so when you compare with glucokinase glucokinase acts only on glucose now coming to the second type of enzyme specificity that is reaction specificity so enzyme is specific to a particular reaction and catalyzes only one type of reaction so that is called as the reaction specificity so that means the same substrate can undergo different types of reactions each catalyzed by a separate enzyme for example if you want a deamination of amino acid then we have to use the deaminase if you want decarboxylation then you have to use decarboxylase if amino acid has to be subjected to transamination then we have to use transaminase so same amino acid is producing different products using different enzymes so that means if you want deamination then we have to use only deaminase using deaminase you cannot produce a product which is formed by transamination right and for example if you see pyruvate it forms different products when the enzyme which is acting is different for example if enzyme that acts on pyruvate is lactate dehydrogenase the product formed is lactate if enzyme acting on pyruvate is pyruvate dehydrogenase product formed is acetyl coa same way if enzyme acting on pyruvate is pyruvate carboxylase it forms oxaloacetate and if the enzyme acting is alanine transaminase it forms alanine so same substrate is converted into different products because of the different enzymes that means if you add alanine transaminase to pyruvate then it forms the product alanine it will not form any other product if this alt is replaced by other enzyme for example ldh then pyruvate forms only product lactate it will not form any other product so based on the enzyme that is added to the substrate the particular product will be formed so here enzymes are specific to the reaction they are not specific to the substrate if you are adding transaminase it is responsible for the transamination reaction if you add decarboxylase it is responsible for the decarboxylation reaction so this is reaction specificity now coming to the third and last type of enzyme specificity that is stereo specificity stereo isomers are the compounds which have the same molecular formula but differ in the structural configuration so here the enzymes which are showing the stereo specificity they act only on one type of the isomer for example if you take l amino acid oxidase this acts only on the l amino acids whereas d amino acid oxidase acts only on d amino acids if you add d amino acid to l amino acid oxidase 
it will not react the same way d amino acid oxidase cannot act on the l amino acids other examples are amylase acts only on the alpha glycosidic linkage whereas cellulase acts only on the beta glycosidic linkage coming to other example d glucose oxidase acts only on d glucose but it will not act on l glucose so this is stereo specificity that's it about the enzyme specificity thank you for watching please like it and subscribe to my channel